So how many dogs entered this year's Crufts? The answer is 23,000. Yes, 23,000 pedigree dogs were shown at this year's Crufts, representing 26 countries who were measured, walked and made to do tricks for a worldwide audience of millions. First, the reputation of the world's most famous dog show, Crufts, is in tatters after a revealing documentary exposed the diseases and deformities suffered by many of Britain's five million pedigree dogs. The documentary says that decades of inbreeding to get dogs looking right for the show's judges has caused a legacy of life-threatening problems from brain conditions in King Charles Spaniels to heart murmurs and breathing problems in pugs and Pekingesers. Uh, I saw the show last night. Here's a moment that, that really stood out for me as one breeder appears to condone putting down perfectly healthy puppies. The ridge is enshrined in the Kennel Club's breed standard as the defining feature of the breed, and so every Ridgeback must have one. The problem is that one in 20 Rhodesian Ridgebacks is born without a ridge. And we do have trouble nowadays with the young vets who tend to see everything in black and white and won't put them down. It's a healthy, beautiful puppy, there's nothing wrong with it except it hasn't a ridge. And you say, well, actually, they're meant to have ridges. It's not easy and um, usually we end up having to go to an old vet that we've known for years to just quietly put them to sleep. I mean, I would rather they were put down under my care than they landed in the hands of the fighting people, which is appalling. I want to slap her so badly. Amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. It, let me just tell you a bit more. that The Kennel Club, who runs Cruff, says it works tirelessly, tirelessly, they say, to improve the health of pedigree dogs and say that 90% of purebred dogs are healthy, but owners of pedigree dogs spend over £10 million a week in vets' fees. So... Should we call time on dog shows? Uh, Cow, you might as well go first. You know what? But, you know, she's talking like there's two alternatives. There's Crofts or there's dog fights. No, there's not. There's lots of families in between who mm. might love a dog with or without a ridge. Well, yeah, I know, but also, I mean, she, she obviously... I think she maybe misunderstands the nature of the dog being born without a ridge. They're Rhodesian yes. ridge ridgebacks, yes. and as the documentary explains, yes. in some ways it's healthier not to have the ridge because the ridge can lead to a form of spina bifida. You know, it's people like her who should be prosecuted, actually. You know, it's, uh, Croft shouldn't be, be made to pay the price for this. It should be the breeders being made to pay right, the well, price. Well, the, the chief of the RSPCA in that show last night said that Crufts was, was a freak show. Well, a, show, a parade of mutants. Maybe this turned into a freak show, but that wasn't the spirit of Crufts. It wasn't well, the it was, idea of Well, it Crufts. was. It started in the, in, the, in the mid 19th century. It was yep. rich Victorian ladies parading their dogs and they wanted to make them as pretty as they possibly could. Mm. And you make well, them prettier by breeding out these sort of these unpleasant aesthetics. You know, I, I, we've got a dog and we've got a veterinarian. And I remember when, when we were going to buy him, um, I, I, I was reading up about it and it's, it said things like, Something called a hip count is very important. Like, it, and that, that's just the way they, the hips are shaped. And, and I said to the breeder, why is that important? Oh, she said, like, for dog shows, it's terribly important. I said, well, yeah. we're not going to breed. I don't care what his hip count is. And she was astonished at that. However, you know, if you, the th it's all about money as well in the end. It's purists about purists and it's about money. You know, even if they ban crufts, they are not going right. to stop breeders breeding these dogs for an enormous amounts of money. Things like these ridiculous breeds they're doing now, like a Labrador, Labrador and a Poodle, they're three grand. And, you know, how can people afford that? Okay, uh, Oliver James, what was it, what was your reaction to that clip that we showed? Well, um, I thought that I felt slightly sorry for that woman because she's obviously completely missing nobbled. Uh, and also, I suppose misinformed. Yeah. <laughs> about, <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously, you know, nobody, presumably, nobody much is going to, you know, be saying sticking up for creating dogs that are in permanent pain, etc., etc. so hardly anybody's going to say... No, but the, the, the that. point that the Kennel Club keep making is that that's a tiny minority yeah. of, of dogs, of purebred dogs. Yeah. What, what a lot of people do is they, 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 they breed their dogs with first-degree relatives, and the Kennel Club has refused to condemn that. Um, so, there, so a lot of breeders, well, I say a lot, a number of breeders will breed their dogs with their, with their brother, their sister, their mother, their father, and, you know, common sense alone... Uh, and science tells you that that's uh, unhealthy. Yeah, I mean, um, incest is definitely not a good thing. Um, look <laughs> Let's at the be clear about that. <laughs> <laughs>
if you were unsure, and, uh, that's the rule. If you look at the royal families of Europe, you know, it's fairly obvious that it doesn't work terribly well. But, the, uh, but the, I, I mean, I think that the, thing, the point, uh, the feeling I had about it was though, that although it's clearly an incredibly well-made documentary and quite an interesting point that nobody's really made before, so mm. it was new, which is terribly rare in modern life to actually hear something new. But in the end, you, sort of, you can't help coming back to why is a lot of attention being paid to this subject when, you know, there's the NSPCC is so much more important than the RSPCC. But attention and the is British paid to that so as well. Obsessed it, it, with animals. I, I, mean, I thought some of the, the images in the, in the documentary were really distressing. Uh, there, yeah. there were dogs born with skulls too small for their but brains. But when there are dogs stories, there are stories all over the fits. country at this moment. There are there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of children being brought up in group daycare, yeah, which right. is extremely bad for them before the age of all three. Right. But that story doesn't get told very often. Greg, I'll come to you in a minute. Let me get a couple of calls and come to you if that's all right. Amy, who have we got? OK, first caller thinks that uh, Chris actually sets the standards a bit too high. It's Nidge on line two. Hello, Nidge. Morning to you. Hi there. Uh, Hi. Hello there. Please elaborate on that point. Well, I feel that the, most of the judges are breeders anyway. And so they're setting the bar off really for the characteristics in these dogs yeah. and therefore everybody's trying to achieve these characteristics and not basically worrying about the health of the dog in the way that we would No, quite well, the general well, public. Well the Kennel Club has a book called The Breed Standards and that outlines how a dog should appear uh, if you want your dog to, to win a rosette at Crufts or another dog show and they're all about aesthetics and, and you're right not much attention, anyway, is paid to the health of the dogs. So and then the Kennel Club as well are, you know, basically encouraging these people because of what they could win and the money they can gain by breeding these dogs that have got these characteristics and then passing them on and creating a bigger and bigger problem. Yeah, OK, thank you, Nidja. Again, I should stress the Kennel Club do say they're investing a lot of money into into the health of dogs, improving the health of dogs, trying to spot these defective genes and, and, uh, and to do something about it. That's what they say. Uh, let's go to Eric in the audience. Who have you got? I've got Nora in here. You've got a bit of dog lover all your life, haven't you? Yes, all my life I've had dogs. Did you see the show last night? I saw parts of it. It was too disturbing to watch the whole show. OK, what, did it, what was your reaction? What did it make you think? What did it make you feel? That did it change your mind about anything? Well, yeah, I used to watch the Cruft show. I'm not going to watch it anymore. Really? And, and why not? Because in, I didn't realize there was all this inbreeding going on, which we know is unhealthy in humans and in animals. Mm. And it was just heartbreaking what's going on. OK, thank you. And you uh, Eric, you have somebody else? Got Vanessa here. So what's your point Hello, of view? Hello, Vanessa. Uh, I absolutely agree. I, I used to love watching Cruft, but I, I won't support it or watch it at all anymore. I think it's terrible. But then, like good. Oliver said, I do think we should worry about humans as well. Do you think it, it's a slightly sensationalist documentary? At one point, they, they compared the Kennel Club and Cruft to uh, Nazi eugenics. Uh, but, uh, OK, Greg. Well, I don't have a dog, and it is true that uh, dogs have been bred to do specific jobs. Working dogs have been bred, and, and certain traces have been bred out of them. But I should imagine the huge percentage of dogs in this country are pets. And if someone as worldly respects as the RSPCA is saying, look, this is a freak show, I think we should actually sit up and take notice. If that's how the RSPCA feel, then there is obvious, obvious cause for concern, and there is obvious suffering. Okay. There has to be a bar, hasn't there, where you, know, you, you shouldn't be allowed to breed a dog if that dog can't breathe properly, if it's suffering, if its brain's too big for school. You, no. that, should, that kind of breeding should be out. Why not, why, why not just say it's illegal to breed a dog with, its, with a first-degree relative? Um, anyway, we, should, we have to leave that there, because we've got a lot still to come in the show. Coming up...